I need to expand on a couple of points from last week's video. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway on this a Chadwick Swift and we'll just be concentrating on expanding a few points that were raised from last week's video on the MP1 and MP5 point motors or some say switch machines and if you haven't seen that video there should be a link here. Now on to some of the points that were raised. Uh, the screws I used to screw the MP5 down were clearly the wrong ones. I should have used smaller screws that weren't countersunk. Obviously it being countersunk it would force the plastic apart and could snap it. So thank you for picking me up on that one. Also the wire that's in this, the cork trench that runs from the motor to the point itself, people mentioned putting it inside a brass tube and yes I'm going to do that and you can see the brass tube here. But the main crux now is about wiring in a Digitrax DS64 with the feedback circuits from the MP1 and the MP5. Now we're going to concentrate on the MP5, it's the more complex one and I'll show you exactly how we do it. Now looking at this image of a DS64 wired up exactly the way I have mine wired. Now first we'll look into the MP5 and the 12 terminals on the plug and the left hand side is the upper 6 and the right hand side is the lower 6. On terminal 2 we have a blue cable which runs back to the first output on the DS64. On terminal 4 is the frog cable, 5 and 6 are track power. Switching over to the lower 6 we have a pink cable running back to input 2, a purple cable running back to input 1 and a brown cable running back to the centre common terminal. Next on terminals 4 and 6 they are linked together and in yellow they run back to the other terminal the other to of output 1. So what does that look like in practice? So now looking at my MP5 on the top six cables we have the blue coming in to terminal 2, the frog coming in to terminal 4 and red and black for track power on terminals 5 and 6. Now if I disconnect it and we look at the lower six then we have my violet cable on the lower one, pink on lower two, the brown common on lower three and then there is nothing on five but four and six are looped together, linked together with the yellow cable which then runs back to the DS64. Now as you may recall from last week's video where I showed you the frog and track power going into the top rows terminal 4, 5 and 6 they actually weren't required on that y-shaped point because the way the frog was, con was configured but I've just put them back in to make it sort of easier to understand for your um, electro frog points. Right now let's take a look at the DS64. So here we are at DS64 number 51 as you can see it's number in the bottom left hand corner. Now it's absolutely vital that in accordance with the instructions that you number your DS64s. They must have uh, an independent number. Now working our way along the top terminals I mentioned that the brown cable goes into the centre uh, terminal and that terminal isn't common it's just marked with a plus sign. And then we have um, terminals 1R and 1G, P plus, 2R, 2G and you work your way along and it's those eight terminals, sorry those ten terminals, the two blocks of five that power the points. And as you can see point 81 goes into 1R and 1G. The point that we're concerned with is point number 83. Now point 83 goes into 3R 
and 3G and those are our yellow and blue cables and it doesn't matter way it doesn't matter which way they go in but you might if they if when you press your throw command it's sort of closed then all you do is reverse those around but it makes no difference either at this end or the other end which way they go and then we come on to that last terminal block and as you can see point 83 is in the second from last set well that's in uh, A3 and S3 and that's the pink and the violet cables that are coming down from the point. As you can see I'm thoroughly into my labels and if you need a labeler then there's one listed in the show more tab and my infection gets worse because obviously <laughs> this is obsessive behavior really isn't it? Right now I also I did mention the brown cable coming back but I get my brown cables to terminate into one of those um, sort of uh, was it way, 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 Vargo uh, blocks so all the browns go into there and then one cable then drops down into that positive terminal hopefully that makes sense now when I mentioned you have to number your DS64s, I wasn't talking about getting the Dymo tape gun out and writing a number on them. You have to number them in accordance with the Digitrax instructions. Now I have several bits when I go through here um, on how I do it and the thing is covered in highlight pen. Um, so what I'd normally do with the DS64 is I reset it to factory settings, then I set it up for stall type motors, um, then I give it um, an address, so I can't remember what that one was called now, but, you know, 56 or whatever, um, and then you have to set it up with its input numbers, i.e. The, the numbers of the points that are concerned, because it might, you know, it's not one, two, three and four, you know, I'm up to 83 you said embarrassingly anyway um, not the easiest thing to understand but you do have to do this is absolutely crucial but there's a stage further now and that is there's two other op switches that must be changed op switch 13 has to be set to closed and op switch 15 also has to be um, switched to closed and this prevents the inputs having any effect on the outputs this setting is not documented by digitracks and my thanks go to a very generous gentleman by the name of George who offers me uh, much of his expertise and we'll come on to a spreadsheet that he has furnished me with. So I can't emphasize this enough, you've got to get to grips with programming the DS64, you've got to give it its own independent ID number, change the obviously the points from uh, solenoid to slow action, number the points that you wish it to operate, and to change those um, switches, those, sorry, those are the op switches. Lovely, what joy. It's just marvelous, isn't it? Anyway, there we go. So now let's take a look how we get the information from the DS64s into train controller so that they will run together. So here we are with my camera room monitor. So we need to launch a spreadsheet which you will find in the show more tab at the bottom it's uh, downloadable you just need to click it and download it don't please please don't try to amend the one that's on the uh, on in the show more tab just download it yourself right now if I zoom you in a little bit okay now thanks to George he's provided this spreadsheet we have the DS64 input, the train controller output and also a plain number which I've never seen before but George says you do need it under certain circumstances. Sounds good to me. Right, so how do you do it? Your DS64 input number, the number, the ops, the program that you, the, the number that you've given your, your DS64, well if you remember mine was 51 and then you have an input number and for this uh, point if you remember it was on A3 and S3 which is 5 and 6 so I need to put 5 in here and incredibly when I click away the answer I'm after is 26 and 5 if we write that one down and the plain number should you need it is obviously 405 
The next one was S3 was on terminal 6, so we popped 6 into, her, into there. Click away. Oh, what a surprise. 26, 6. The address is 26 and the input is 6. And that is us done. So now we need to launch train controller and get this information into the system. So here we are in train controller. Ooh. And here is the Y-shaped point, or the Y point, over here. Now coming up to the top, I need to select contact. And I need to place a contact on both of the legs of the sidings that come from the Y point. Then double clicking on one of the contacts brings up this window. Now in this window, we need to select our system and this one comes up as Loconet General Input EG DS54 BDL16. The DS54 and the BDL16 were previous pieces of hardware from Digitrax. This is the interesting piece. Now, if you remember, we had address was 26. And the input number was 5. Exciting. And then we do the same for the second one. And this input was 26. And the input was 6. Beautiful. OK. Now, as you can see, we now have colour in here. And if I come out of edit mode and I go to change the point, we can see the symbol change and the colour change. However, there is an issue because the lighter blue should be the active, um, uh, the active direction. So these two are the wrong way around. No big deal. Back into edit mode and I just drag this off. He said, hopefully, put that one up there. That one goes there. And back into operational mode, switch the point and train controller has its feedback. And as you can see, when I change this point, the symbol changes immediately, but it's only when the system, uh, when the motor is run and the new contacts made that the colors change, giving train controller its feedback. Easy as that. Now that was a bit geeky, wasn't it? Right, a couple of comments I've had regarding the spring that I left in the Y-shaped point. It works perfectly well with it, and I'm sure it'll work perfectly well without it, because there's a point down here that doesn't have a spring fitted, so I think it's, you know, the jury's out really. It doesn't really matter if you leave them in or not. If you leave them in, you get the extra click. Some people say if you take them out, then you need to put a, some, a, bit, a bit of springiness in there, like a, something called an Amiga curve. But then if you've adjusted the stud to give you the right amount of throw, I can't really see why. Um, what else is there? If you make the changes to the DS64 op switches that I mentioned, which were, I think it was in particular, op switch 13 to closed, you can't use the DS64 on a switch panel because you've taken the circuit into um, the sensor circuit from the DS64 to do the feedback. So if you're thinking of using a DS64 and then come up to a, a switch panel, it's kind of one or the other. So, you know, don't, don't try to, if you've got train controller, don't try to input these sensor switches if you're using a control panel, because you can't have both. We believe it's one or the other. Now what I haven't touched on is the DS74, the DS64 replacement, and I do have a couple, thanks to um, a generous patron by the name of Tim. Tim, thank you very much indeed. Um, and how do you wire those? Well, here is a graphic from James at DCC Train Automation on how you wire those. However, comma, spacebar, um, we're unsure on how you wire the feedback circuitry on those because you're going into the, one of those eight pin connectors. 
Um, so we're still trying to figure that one out. And But if you know, then please leave a comment because you'll be able to en enlighten us all. Right. Now, one thing I would like from you guys, if you if you have this knowledge, and that is with the DS64s, it's possible to input information such as um, a read switch making or an ER dot um, being triggered. So if you're using those commodities to go into a DS64 and then into train controller or iTrain or JMRI, then please let me know because I find that a little bit bewildering. Um, the jury is still out on how I'm going to do it. I do need to use um, some read switches on my freight, uh, no, on my bulk fuel installation um, and a couple of ER dots here and there. And I'm also working at working on an automated um, level crossing with double gates going across two tracks. So there's some inputs to be done there. So if you can help me on that information, they'd be much appreciated. So that wraps this one up. There's the patron button. There's the subscriber button. And more importantly, a video here and here that might suit you. See you in one week's time. Take care. Bye-bye.